ready. Uh, just welcome all of you to come back. Uh, this is the first lesson, uh, formal lesson after the, your Easter holiday. And uh, today, I uh, would like to have a, uh, maybe maybe some of you, most of you uh, may be very aware uh, of uh, the fact that we have just covered uh, all paper one. And uh, because of that, in the in today, uh, we have got two lessons. Our first lesson is in a, uh, within that hour here. We would like to have a coverage of uh, highlights of some of the key points of Michael too. And then uh, next, uh, we will go over view some answers some recent type, uh, recent type questions. It's very similar to what you are having, uh, you have been uh, practicing this week. Okay, so next week we would uh, go over a view on metals. Okay, so uh, to start with uh, this part first. Okay, this part, Michael two. So uh, as said before, you have to refer to the uh, syllabus. Uh, you may find in the link, and now uh, we will talk about uh, Michael two. How is it related to Michael one? Now Michael one, Michael one, uh, we have got three to four MZs. And uh, we have got about half long questions. Why would you say that is half? It is usually related to the Michael two questions to form one uh, long questions. For the remaining MCs, is about two to uh, about one to two MCs. So altogether, uh, you may expect that for the long questions, it will uh, give you about um, maybe five to six marks. It's not too much. But uh, for the remaining, well, you will mark it as about 12, uh, 11 or 12 marks in total together with the mask of MCs, uh, which means one level, okay, one level are worth of your DSE paper. So uh, if you uh, get, uh, you have a very good foundation of simple molecular structure in micro one, I'm sure you would have a uh, good uh, work on the micro two as well. Okay, so the focusing point on this part it comes from micro one simple molecular structure. Okay, so this is what I would like to talk to you uh, here. So uh, the highlights with that, uh, we would like to have a further look on the molecules. I try to compare uh, how come some molecules can dissolve in water, but some cannot. So it is more or less related to what we call it as a polarity of the molecules. Okay, uh, whether or not the molecule is set as a polar or not polar. So of course, uh, if you want to talk about polarity of molecules, you need to consider both the bond polarity and the mo uh, molecules, uh, the shape of the molecules. So this is what uh, uh, the first point uh, that we, uh, that should get addressed to the uh, <clears throat> uh, to the uh, to the molecules, the shape of mo the polarity of molecules. And second is about uh, the intermolecular force. Okay, the second chapter is the intermolecular force. You may have a, uh, a get to know more about what makes the Van der Waals force. Okay stronger or not stronger so the best case is to compare uh, some non-polar substance and polar substance and you use this to relate and what's next is to know that it will more or less affect the their physical property similarly uh, we will have another intermolecular force in which i would like to uh, you to be very aware of it is hydrogen bond Okay, it is hydrogen bond. So, and uh, it is a, another type of uh, intermolecular force and a very particularly strong intermolecular force uh, when you compare it with dipole dipole dispersion, uh, which undergo the Van der force. Okay, hydrogen bond is another type of force. So, how will you show that, know that it is another type, right? Uh, you need so, some special um, conditions for formation. So uh, this is what, all those what you need to be uh, aware of and you need to memorize it. Okay, so uh, in short, now I would like to check 
the syllabus with all of you. First of all, something that you need to memorize to define. Like you see the word define here, right? The electronegativity of an atom, define. Okay, you need to memorize the definition. Okay, now second, it's about the general trends of the electronegativity of main group elements down a group and across a period. So what is that? The main groups are down a group, the electronegativity decrease, right? Decrease. While you talk about across a period, it increase. So this is what I would like you guys to get to know. So the one which is closest, so what was the reference point? The reference point is fluorine. Fluorine is the most electronegative element, okay, uh, in the periodic table. So one which is closer to the fluorine means uh, more electronegative. Of course, by you compare fluorine, fluorine is the most electronegative. Now, uh, now for, for the remaining, it is uh, you talk about uh, the molecules, whether or not it is polar or non-polar, uh, by checking what? By checking the bond polarity as well as the shape. Okay? So this is what uh, you may know. And you may see something that uh, has been crossed out. So what is that? So what is that? So uh, uh, you are going to uh, have a higher, right? You have got a of it on higher level. You are going to explain this time, not identify. Explain why that molecule is polar or non-polar. So that's why the whole framework uh, of answering, uh, explaining the polarity of the molecules uh, should be highly noted. So this is what I would like you guys to get to know. Now, questions? Now, second is to talk about the intermolecular force. For the intermolecular force, uh, ah, before that, uh, these, all those C, D, and D part, uh, you may find it into your textbook as well. So you may find the structure of the properties of some um, molecules. So in old syllabus, you get you need to know C sixty, but in your syllabus uh, you need not. So you may find that C sixty the structure of C sixty has been crossed out. So don't worry, you may also uh, it is not that difficult. You may also uh, get to have a self study by yourself, and uh, you are going to talk about the ice, the structure of ice. What is so special about ice structure? We call it we call it a, it's an open case structure. Right, open case structure, which makes a difference uh, with the liquid water, which is more closely packed. So, uh, because of that, you may know that ice has a lower density than water. What's next is about the non ortex structure. So, you may get to know uh, some situation where you may find non ortex structure. I've just told you, one of them is impurity. Okay. So you may find that in beryllium, boron, carbon, so little carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. Okay, those three, um, you may experience uh, having a molecule having normal test structure, and because of what we call it period two, uh, if I say that also in normal term, generally speaking, you are talking about uh, less than octet. Okay, less than octet for period two molecules. How about in period three? Period three is another thing. Period three will have got more than eight electrons. Okay, so uh, anyone who can suggest with me some examples of the elements having uh, the uh, expansion of octet. Zhang Gaming, do you still remember? You just you just give me a question mark, which means you are you do not pay attention to my questions, right? To the lecture. Example, phosphorus. Yes, that's right, Benzyl. Good. Phosphorus. What's that? What else? Sulfur. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's right. PCl five. We have got phosphorus here. In which it will have expansion of time. Phosphorus. Sulfur. Is just that too? Yes, SF6, good. 
what else? What are the elements? Silicon, non F6. <laughs> now, uh, for Silicon Hayes case and markers, uh, you need to be uh, very aware of that too. First of all, silicon. Can you suggest for me any uh, compound molecules having expansion of time for silicon? It's not just a wild gas. It's not a wild gas. Any, any examples? How about markers? Xenon F6. Xenon, Xenon. Which group it, does it belong to? And which period? Is it period three? Yes, group zero. But for the Xenon, uh, it is a very, very special case or for the noble gas, uh, which can form compounds, okay? So in DSC, you need not know it, but uh, you may find, uh, it is something related to the availability of the orbitals. So it is out of all your syllabus here. But uh, what I, could you please focus on period three again? Phosphorus, sulfur, what else? How about the next one, the next element, next to sulfur? It's not phosphorus, what about the next one? How about chlorine? Right, chlorine, we have it. We have a, we have got a molecule just like Cl207, right? If you, if you refer to the periodic pattern Cl207, that you may find it. Uh, for the chlorine uh, atom here, uh, it has an expansion of octane. And the shape of the simple molecules that you need to know, uh, it will have got certain, uh, certain shapes. Okay. So no matter that, that obey not all tail rule or not, not tail rule, so you are going to have uh, to get to know the shape. So this is what which covers the micro two, which covers the micro two. So uh, shall we take a look on the, uh, it's time to have a uh, note taken here, right? To, uh, to get to know the whole thing, the whole thing. Well, the whole story will be very, very long as tell. And, uh, Everything starts from what? Now, everything starts from um, something uh, we focus on the two main parts. One is on the a polarity. Okay, the polarity of molecules, the first one, I'll let you tell. Oops. Let me see how come. Uh, uh, I would like to draw this one. Shape. Shape of molecules. Okay, here. So all together, we have got different shapes of molecules. Uh, maybe, maybe too low. Uh, because I need to draw something more. Sorry about that. The shape of molecule here. Well, so we have got uh, several different shapes of molecules. What are they? Could you please name a few? So everything starts from what you know to get to know the shape of molecules. You need to know what. You need to consider what. The number of lone pair and the bond pair electrons. Okay, so because of that, we have got different combination. But you may have got different combinations. So we have got what? Start from linear, trigonal, planar. Okay, we have got two electron center. We have got three electron center. How about that? Trigonal, pyramidal, 
Now it is very special huh? for trigonal pyramidal. We have got one long pair, three bond pair. Now I would like to mark it in, uh, in, uh, in detail. What is that? And uh, that one linear, we've got two, two bond pair only. How about what's next? Tetrahedral. Okay, tetrahedral. What you may have is got four bond pair. What else? Now, in between these two, we have got uh, some cases just like V shape, having two long pair, two bond pair. Or maybe uh, for some of you, you may uh, think of uh, even one long pair, two bond pair. We can also have a V shape. So it really, really depends on what you're having, right? Linear, trigonal planar, trigonal pyramidal, V-shaped, tetrahedral, trigonal, bipyramidal, uh, di, We've got five bond pair. And lastly, which is what? It is octahedral. So, Ed, uh, can you suggest a example of those? Okay, just write it in, uh, down, uh, just next to the shape. Do you still remember the shape, uh, the, the examples which have got that shape? Yes, CO2, yes. What else? Yeah, SF6. Mm -hmm. And how about a uh, trickle by pyramidal? Yes, BCL5. Now, the second one I would like to talk to you is about the bomb polarity, okay? Bomb polarity. Uh, you need to check what? Okay. You check the difference in electronegativity between the two uh, elements, okay, of the two bonding at uh, atoms. So it's time to check your understanding about the definition of the term electronegativity. What let's mean by electronegativity? For those who still remember the definition, okay, put the tape. If not, across. So, Gavin, you better refer to the book. First of all, do you uh, anyone? Who am I drafting your notes? <sighs> now here comes the first topic already out of the 12. have you started drafting your notes? I didn't see you for long. How about Zheng Kuan Wai? Shen Zi Hin, Shen Long Wang, Choi Zhong Shang, and Pun Zi Hin. Are you here? Hmm. 
Yes, great. You talk about the power or the tendency or uh, of an atom. Of, of that element to attract the bonding electrons towards itself in a molecule, okay? So that's why uh, if you say that bonding electrons, so uh, the bond, what we are considering is covalent bond, of course. Okay, we have got covalent bond. So we have got two types of uh, covalent bond, right? One is polar, uh, we have got polar or non-polar bond. Okay, so this will affect what? This will affect your, what we will call it as a, on a uh, polarity of a molecules, okay? So we have got that two factors all together and uh, you need to uh, be aware of the, yes, sorry, this is number one, this is number two, okay? We need to consider uh, it and it will affect what? The polarity. The polarity of the of molecules. Okay, so what is missing here? Right? What's it? What is missing? So you get to know the polarity of molecules. It is something related to what? Now, it is, uh, you, you just mentioned cancel out each other. What does it mean? What is cancel out each other? What? Okay, or you could talk it as a overall um, polarity of the of all bonds. So this is what I'd like to talk to you here, right? So it will affect our our polarity of molecules. Do you still remember all those? So remember, uh, you, what you say that reinforce or cancel out each other, if we are not referring to the bond, but the bond polarity. Okay, and second, it's about the shape of the molecules. It is more or less related to uh, those uh, polarity of molecules. Now, so you may, I would like to clarify here with you. I, I found that uh, later on, many of you would like to write down symmetrical or as asymmetrical. So what is that? What does that mean about symmetrical asymmetrical? It refers to the what? The bond arrangement, but not just equal to the shape. Okay, remember, they are not exactly equal. So even though you would say the shape, it is a trigger planar, okay? If you have still have a trigger plane, uh, this molecule is a trigger planar, uh, you may find that line symmetry, that doesn't mean, right? This molecule is non-polar. So you are going to tell how the bond is arranged such that uh, with considering the overall bond polarity to get to know the molecule is polar or not. Is that clear? So this is what uh, the uh, the whole chapter chapter twenty three is talking about. Do you still remember that one? Okay. And what's next is to uh the, once I know the polarity molecules, you know that it will affect what 
it will affect the strength of the Van der Waals. Okay, so you may find that on a new page for this. So far, do you have any questions? So, Wu Zhong, hey, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Good. You still remember that, okay? So, uh, what's next is to refer to the next page. Now, I expect uh, you guys to capture this one. I'll give you five seconds to capture that before we continue. A very tedious word, Mr. Right? Why well, you need to have a making of the notes. Now, next, here comes the intermolecular force, right? Another map that you need to know. Another map on the intermolecular force. So you know that on this time, uh, if you want to talk about intermolecular force, we have got two types. Okay, we have got two types. But uh, if you want to uh, consider it as a, to compare the strength of intermolecular force, right? It is more or less affected by two types of intermolecular force. So you know what's that, right? We've got that too. One is hydrogen bond. The other one is Van der Waal force. Now, so you have to um, get to know the uh, interaction. Iron dipole is another thing, it's not intermolecular force because one of them is iron. Now, so you may find that too. And uh, you know what I, I would like to guys to, uh, to refer to me is about the condition. Of formation. So you get to know the hydrogen bond conditional formation. Okay, and uh, once you know it, so uh, how does the strength of the hydrogen bond depend on, right? You need to know. Uh, we have got some cases that you need to be aware of it, okay? some some cases right and uh, for Wendell force you know Wendell force is another thing uh and you may refer to uh we have got two main types okay so uh i would like to address to all of you to two main types indeed once you go to the web and you may find that there are three types right but uh for this part it's fair enough to get to know the two types. One is dipole, dipole. The other one is what? Dispersion. We have got a very strange name, what is that? A very long name, instantaneous dipole in those dipole attraction right or interaction so dipole dipole it is a, what we call it as a permanent dipole right it's a type of permanent dipole permanent dipole interaction now got the difference between the two so for the Dispersion force, 
you may find it in all molecules. But for dipole dipole attraction, what for uh, what what we may find in a dipole dipole attraction? If the molecule it is polar. Okay, do you still remember that? So we have got that too. While the uh, the strength of the dispersion it is affected by what? What makes the dispersion stronger? And similarly, how about this, right? What makes the dipole dipole attraction stronger? It's simple, right? It is the polarity of the molecules, which makes the dipole dipole attraction stronger. And uh, for the others, yes, this is size of electron cloud. A very long term, right? A very, very long term. And you may jump to this, right? If time is not enough, right? It's not enough. What you need to do is to draw size of molecules is already okay, right? Indeed, you talk about size of electron cloud, okay? Which will affect what? The extent of electron cloud to be distorted. So you may have a very long term, what we call it as a polarizer ability. Okay, and which will affect the strength of a straight uh, is, uh, dispersion. How about that? The other one is the, the, the polarity of molecules is very, very, sim uh, very, very, very simple. So you may find it on the previous page to get to know, right? What makes that polarity of molecules stronger or not? Is that clear? So how about the hydrogen bond? You take a look on the uh, left right hand side, the condition of formation. So you need that you need that too, right? Something positive, something negative. You know that it is a very uh, particularly strong dipole dipole attraction. Very special one. Okay, so you may have something positive and something negative. Positive, the hydrogen atom attached to highly electronegative element N or O or F. Second, negative, lone pair electrons of those highly electronegative atom, just like N or O or F, right? We have got that too. But remember, that too is just like a dipole-dipole expression, but not a ionic, right? It is, a very, it, is, it's, uh, it is also a slight charge. But the slight charge, but the slight charge is, Highly slight charge, right? It's a highly slight charge. Very strange term, right? Slight charge is one term, but we have got a very large separation of the charge. So what are the factors that make the hydrogen bond stronger? First of all, the number of hydrogen bond between the molecules, the number that can be made. So you know that you need to refer to what? Functional group. Now it's time to take a look on the, uh, something more about the, functional group.
you talk about this one, right? Number of functional group. Any any functional group, just like hydroxy group, carboxyl group. What else? A amino group, right? Uh, a my group. No matter it is uh, non-substituted or substituted. Right? For those who have got that combination, you may know that, wow, we may have a chance of having hydrogen bond. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay. So, any more? Any more that you want to add? So how does it affect, what, what's the point of talking about the strength of intermolecular force here? What's the point? So you may know that the stronger or the weaker intermolecular force, it would affect what? It would affect the physical property of a substance, okay? Just like boiling point, volatility, viscosity, okay? Do you still remember the term, etc. Oh yes, soybeating. Or if you if you talk about a uh, then between the two liquids, we call that miscibility. Okay, is that clear? So here comes a very big map. Huh? something big. And I would like you guys to be very aware of that. And that marks the that marks the end of this chapter, right? Over a summary of this chapter. Questions? Easy, difficult. Now it depends on uh, your understanding, right? You know that all those base on the a molecule, a simple molecular structure. And here comes the extended version. I will try to take a look on in detail on what makes the intermolecular force stronger or weaker. So it will help you guys uh, understand more about organic chemistry one and two. So far, any questions? Anyone who feel uh, for those who feel mm, quite comfort, uh, quite comfortable that you can manage, right? For those who think you can manage, could you please clap? If not, uh, down, thumbs down. Oh, I finally realized, I turned up when you slept. Understand? Can you follow? Alexander, can you follow? So you, you failed to follow my instructions. All right. If so, Mm, great. I give you some uh, challenging questions now. Huh. First of all, chapter 23. This part. Zhang Wen, you'll be the first one to answer. Do you know what's that?
And now, uh, if possible, you may turn on the mic or maybe just you just type and to show me your thought. It's not just telling me A, B, C, or D, but also give me your explanation. Uh, each one of you will have a chance. First of all, Zhang Gaoling. The first one. Hello, are you here? Huh. Uh, Alexander, a very good reflection, a, good, a, a very good testing agent right, for, for me to get to know uh, whether or not you have watched the video this week. <laughs> uh. Ben Zeal, have you watched the video? Zeal Jun Hai. Zhang Zhang Gao, you you know that we are not we we are no longer in the Qing Dynasty, right? You know it. Uh, sulfur actum in the sulfur hexafluoride obeys octet rule. You mark it as B, which means this one is take, this one is take. What is mean by sulfur hexafluoride? Uh, which level are you aiming at? Five star again? You have just got one one year left. Are it's time to pick up all those chemistry terms that you are going to uh, do some practice? Uh, well, that means you forgot to, uh, how to draw the shape. So first of all, octet rule that doesn't obey octet rule. Okay. Mm, this one correct. Okay, this one correct. The shape of this is correct. And now uh, the the focusing point is to check for this one. We have got how many electrons for sulfur? Sulfur. We have got expansion of octet, right? Expansion of octet. Tell me, or uh, how come sulfur? would have an expansion of octet. Zhang Gaoling, could you please help? Give me your understanding. Why does sulfur actum in the sulfur hexafluoride can form an extension of octet? structure are you here Yes, sulfur is period three, which will have extension of octet. <laughs> but uh, what is the relationship between next uh, period three elements and hold more than eight electrons? What is what is the relationship between period three elements and extension of octet?
some keywords. Ah, uh, you missing. You missing some. You miss out some keywords. You just write down two n square formula. You you mean you mean that you are uh you are pre, uh, you you just ask the marker to calculate the formula for you. Okay. Yes, you are going to tell me like this, right? It's time to pick up all those. Let's see. Zhang Gaoming, by by uh by late, uh, I will expect you guys to to watch all those videos, uh Saturday and Sunday, and get back to me understanding. Do you hear me? Second question two. Uh, Chen Long Wang. Phosphorus sectum, the phosphorus trichloride PeCl three. Obey object rule. Phosphorus is period three elements. Also we take right. So A B A or B. It's still B, yes, that's right, it's B. It's nothing related to it. It's nothing related to the period. Three, oxygen can form hexafluoride. Hexafluoride, no, no. There are six electrons in the outermost shell of oxygen atom. Yes, it's B, some of the, you mark it as B. Is C? Is C? Why not oxygen can form hexafluoride? Yes, period two. So, what's the point of period two? Yes. The maximum makes electrons in the outermost shell. Okay, so please be aware of it. Question four: Boron trifluoride and nitrogen trifluoride molecule has the same shape. Both they are period two elements. Turn away. Mm -hmm. Marcus, explanation is uh, is all right. Question four. What is the difference? The shape is different, right? Tell me the sh the difference in shape. BF three and NF three. So where are you? Slept. Or the, the, the spelling is wrong. Please double check the shape. Trigonoplana, not trigonoplana. P L A N A R, not P L A N N E R. And uh, the second one is trigonal by, uh, is trigonal pyramidal. N F three. Is trigonal pyramidal. Yeah. Question five. Choi Zhong Sha. Can't 
carbon disulfide molecule and water molecule have the same shape, cross. Initial molecule are four pairs of electrons. Tell me the difference in the shape. If you say this wrong, four pairs of electrons around carbon at uh, around the central atom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Water is B-shaped, CS2, how about CS2? And it's just linear. The shape of it is very similar to carbon dioxide. Mm, yeah, that's right. Now, the answer is cross antec is C. How about questions, uh, the final four, uh, five questions? Number six. Graphite and diamond, they are only allotropes of carbon. Diamond and graphite, they are substance of giant covalent structure. Yes, we have got process. Any other example? Giant covalent structure is correct. C, an example. C60, bucky ball. Yes, that's right. How about seven? Nitrogen can form pentachloride. There are five electrons in the outermost shell of the nitrogen atom. Yeah, cannot. Cannot. Yes, again, it is related to what? Right, the period, and the period that will tell you what? The maximum accommodation of the electrons in the most shell. So, uh, expansion of octet already, right? Number eight. Uh, number eight. Phosphorus can form trifluoride and pentafluoride. Yes, that's right. For five and tech tech A or B. It's still B, right? It's still B. Because a group number doesn't tell you the, uh, whether or not they have got expansion or tech. For the expansion of tech, you, you have to go back to what? You have to go back to the shell, right? You need to go back to the shell number which shell we are going to have it as outermost shell. So of, that's why you talk about period, right? So you are going to talk about the outermost shell. You refer to the maximum number of electrons uh, that can be accommodated in the automobile shell. Number nine, oxygen can form tetrafluoride. Oh, again, <laughs> tetrafluoride, right? huh. very strange. Four electrons in the automobile shell, no, 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 no. no. Oh, this, the, uh, the last question. BF3 molecule is a planar, while NF, NCL3 molecule is a trigonal pyramidal. The boron atom has a larger size of nitrogen atom. Tong Ho. The last question. Boron atom is larger than nitrogen atom. It's it's like, yeah, how about this? Planar. Trigonal planar, right? Actually, this one, this one trigonal pyramidal is still the tech. B, B, yeah, B, but not A. What is the reason? Tell me the shape. What does the shape depend on? Yes, it depends on that. You know, uh, one thing I I forgot uh, you guys should uh, refer to is about whisper theory. So this is what you need to memorize this part. What does it tell? I know it is a little bit out of the service, but the spirit that you have to know. And this will 
more or less a factual understanding about the shape? What is this theory? In that science again. Forgot. Uh, is it Paul Nazi not here, right? Paul Nazi absent. Who else? Mark Yulan. Are you here, Mark Yulan? Paul Nazi and Mark Yulan. Yes, that's right. You talk about what is mean by EMP. We call it electron pair. Okay? Electron pair in the automobile shell. Of a central atom, what happened to it? We have got out. So, what is that? Okay. So, we call it repulsion, repel. Repair. So, stay as far as possible. So, of course, you need to consider 3D. You need to consider 3D to minimize the repulsion. So it is what we will call it as the Bisper theory, number one. Actually, we have got point number two, but the point number two, uh, of course, this will not be assessed. You know it, right? So we have got point number two. It is A level stuff, okay? You know what? Do you know anything about? Uh, yes, it will tell you the bond angle. Okay, and bond angle is this affected by what? Lone pair, lone pair repulsion. It is greater than lone pair, bond pair. It is greater than bond pair, bond pair repulsion. So this is uh, about out of the surface. It's A level stuff. If you don't understand that, don't worry. But for this part, I, I, the spirit of it, I need you guys to get to know about that. Questions? Questions? What do you feel about this? I mean, I, I expect you to come to me tonight. We are now having revision now. Uh, you have to come back. And also, Siu Jun, hey, where are you? Nine, five, six point five, six point five, huh? Ben Siu, where are you? Zhang Quan Mai. Now you guys should be uh, take note of that. Uh, how about Chen Long Wang? Yes, feel better? Yes, much better. Uh, just work up. And uh, the time now is 2.15 now. I would like to stop it here. Enjoy the quiz on equilibrium. Bye-bye. Equilibrium.